Shalom, beloved of the King. Praise Abba Yahuwah. Here we are again today, having to come and look at a book that is truly a prophetic insight into many things. As truly, Yeshaya, who is one of the prophets, I believe, that goes so deep, that truly not only spoke to just one nation, but he had a prophetic message that spoke to more than one nation. And he was able to speak prophetically, I think, like very few of the other prophets. And I think that that is why Yeshaya Hum is so deep. And that is why there are so many chapters. Because this was a prophet that truly spoke in such a a diverse way and I think Yeshaya who covers so many different aspects that it's so deep that we really need to go deep in order to be able to understand all that Isaiah was speaking in his day and how this these chapters as we read them are speaking so profoundly in our lives in order for us to be able to go deeper as well, to understand the revelation of the heart of the Father in what he is revealing through Yeshayahu. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you. I thank you, Abba Father, that there are so many lessons that we truly can learn from just this chapter alone, to understand that you alone are a Yah, that when you have decreed and when you have said, it shall be as you have said, that your word will not return to you void, but that which you have spoken shall surely come to pass, and that you are one, that you will do what you say you will do, and you will punish wayward and sinful ways. And you do not take lightly to arrogance and pride. And truly we understand that pride comes before a fall. And the greatest sin of man before you is when they lift themselves up and to think that they can be prideful before you because of that which you do for them or how you use them. And this is what man does not understand that you will use man as pawns in your hand for you to be able to do what it is that you want to do. But we are never to become filled with arrogance and pride in the way that you use your people. And the minute we think that we stand, we need to be so careful because pride comes before a fall. And this is what we see when Man gets exalted and thinks that everything is about themselves and that they are the ones that have achieved everything. Nothing is about ourselves. Nothing is about us and for our own kingdoms. But everything is about you and your kingdom. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I thank you that you truly teach us the lessons that you want to teach us through this chapter alone. And so I praise and I thank you, Father, that you alone will be the one to speak to my mind, speak through my lips, the very oracles that is going to come from your heart, my Father, so that truly we can be a people that can hear and obey to Shema so that we may be able to be those that change our wayward ways. Because we are living in a time now where truly, as the air that we breathe, we need to repent. When we see the wickedness within our own selves. I praise and I thank you for this lesson, Father, in Yahushua's name. Amen. So praise Abba Father, we start with um, chapter 14, verse 1. Because Yahuwah has compassion on Yaakov. And shall again choose Israel and give them rest in their own land 
and the strangers shall join them, and they shall cling to the house of Yaakov. Wow, what a powerful scripture, as this is a scripture that can be seen not only as a message that has already come to pass, but a message for a future utterance where Father will have a people. He will have the fullness of the house of Israel that will once again be a house made up of 12 tribes that will dwell safely in the promised land, in the land which he had already demarcated and given to Abraham and a promised land where they would dwell safely. And so there are many prophetic utterances that talk about this very scripture. And we can have a look at them in Zechariah. Let's go have a look at Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 1 verses 16 to 17. And it says, Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, I shall return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house shall be built in it, declares Yahuwah of hosts, and a surveyor's line be stretched out over Jerusalem. Again proclaim, saying, Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, Again my city shall overflow with goodness, and Yahuwah shall again comfort Zion, and shall again choose Jerusalem. So we must understand that there is a future kingdom, a future kingdom, when Abba Yahuwah is going to be the one to reign and rule over Jerusalem. And so this is a picture of that which is going to take place. There was definitely, this was fulfilled in the time of when Israel returned back to the land after the 70 years that was prophesied by Daniel when Daniel prayed and there was a time under Ezra when the people of Israel returned back to the land. And so we do know that this did come to fulfillment but yet at the end of the day it was not the fullness of the house of Israel. It was only made up of the southern kingdom that came back. But there is a future kingdom that is going to be made up of a full house that will return. And so if we have a look at Zechariah chapter 2 verses 10 to 12. And it says, Sing o, and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For look, I am coming and shall dwell in your midst, declares Yahuwah. And many nations shall join to Yahuwah in that day. They shall become my people and I shall dwell in their midst. And you shall know that Yahuwah of hosts has sent me to you. And Yahuwah shall inherit Yehudah, his portion, in the set apart land. And he shall again choose Yerushalayim. So we see that this is not only going to be a promise that is for the house of Judah but that he says and they shall become my people and many nations will be joined to Yahuwah in that day many nations so it means he's gathering many people from many nations that will be part of his house that will return so if we have a look at Zechariah 8 verse 23 and in Zechariah ch chapter 8 verse 23 says and thus is Yahuwah of hosts in those days ten men from all languages of the nations take hold yes they shall take hold of the edge of the garment of a man of a Yehudi saying let us go with you for we have heard that Allah is with you now isn't it interesting even the woman with the issue of blood held on to the hem of the garment. Of who? Of Yahushua. So who is the man that is the Yehudi? The man that is the Yehudi is Yahushua because out of the tribe of Yehudah, 
out of the tribe of Judah from the stump of Yeshai, there was going to come one where the nations of the world was going to hold on to the tzitzit, on to the commands, on to that which was, what was the tzitzit? The tzitzit was representative of the commands of the, the Torah, of the foundations of the Torah that was given. And they were going to hold on to the hem of the garment of one that was going to come and say, we have heard that Elua is with you. Let us go with you. So we will follow the lamb wherever he goes. And so this is what we see that comes out of of John chapter 4 where he says my father is looking for true worshippers he said to the woman at the well you will neither worship on this mountain but the day is coming when my father is going to have true worshippers that will worship in spirit and in truth and that is why father is now raising up a worshipping people he's raising up a true priesthood a priesthood that will be able to follow the lamb wherever he goes but at the same time holding on to the hem of the garment of the foundation that was given to us in the in um um the word that is from from the torah so that we may be able to return back to the foundations of Torah from which we have gone astray. And that is why the nations, you see, it's very simple because what has happened is the nations have gone astray from the Torah. But the Abba Yahuwah's people have gone astray from what? They have gone astray because they do not have the Ruach of Yahuwah. And now Abba Yahuwah is wanting to be able to raise up a people that may be able to return. Now listen to what he says in Numbers chapter 15 when it says about holding on to the garment. Now look at the significance of a tzitzit and when the woman of the issue of blood was holding on to the tzitzit of the garment of the one who was a, that is a Yehudi and say we have seen that Yahuwah is with you. So when he talks about the tzitzit, it says, And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them to make tzitzit on the, on the corners of their garments throughout their generations, and to put a blue cord in the tzitzit of the corners. And it shall be for you a tzitzit, and you shall see it, and shall remember all the commands of Yahuwah, and shall do them, not to search after your own heart, and your own eyes after which you went whoring. So you see, everything of this chapter is basically of how a nation has fallen, how kings have fallen. Why? Because they have gone after the idols. They have gone after the idols of their own heart because it says that you will remember the commands of Yahuwah and shall do them and not search after your own heart and your own eyes after which you went whoring. So you see that you don't go after your own way and chase after your own heart and go astray because of your own self-will that you want to do things your way and not the way of the Father. And he says, so that you remember and shall do all my commands and be set apart unto your Alua. I am Alua, your, I am Yahuwah, your Alua, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Alua. I am your Alua. And so understand what was the purpose of us having to look at that tzitzit so that we do not go astray and do our own will. That's why it says clearly over here that he says, and shall take hold of the edge of the garment of a man. What is the edge of the garment? It was the tzitzit of the, the garment that was on Yahushua's tzitzit. That's his future. A yo, um, of a man, a Yehudi, Yahushua. Let us go with you, for we have heard that Alua is with you. So we have heard, we have seen what you have done, and we want to follow the Lamb wherever he goes. And we are to learn not to follow our own wayward ways. And this is what we're going to understand from this, from this um, chapter that we are going to look at. And so we look at Joel chapter 3. In Joel chapter 3 from verses 16. Joel chapter three sixteen to 17. And it says, 
and Yahuwah shall roar from Zion and give forth his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, but Yahuwah shall be a refuge for his people and a stronghold for the children of Israel. Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Lord, dwelling in Zion, my set-apart mountain, and Jerusalem shall be set apart, and foreigners shall not pass through there again. So you see, the, this is not going to be for the, this is the highway of holiness. This is not going to be for the unclean. The foreigner needs to hold on to the hem of the garment. The foreigner needs to be grafted in to the house and to the covenant that was already given from the beginning when he's given the covenant to Abra Abraham. Isaac and Yaakov, understanding that that was the foundation. Abba Yahuwah spoke the Torah. Yahushua became the son. That, so it's Abba Yahuwah, the foundation, the Yah of Avram, the foundation of the father, the son, Yahushua, and then Yaakov, the house that is filled, and we are grafted into that house. So we must understand that there is a pattern that the Father has brought from the beginning. And so if we have a look at Isaiah chapter 56, which is so beautiful. I love Isaiah chapter 56 of the promise that the Father has brought to be able to bring the nations in so that we can say that even for the nations he has made a way, for the one who loves Yahuwah, for the one who loves the name of Yahuwah. And so we have a look at Isaiah chapter 56. And he says from verse 1, Thus says Yahuwah, God right ruling and do righteousness, for near is my deliverance, near is my Yahushua to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. You see, understand, what is he saying here? If we have a look, Thus said Yahuwah, God in right ruling to do righteousness, for near is my deliverance, near is my Yahushua to come. Yahushua was going to come and he was going to instate my righteousness and to be revealed. So through him, righteousness was going to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this and the son of man who becomes strong in it, guarding the Sabbath lest he profane it and guarding his hand from, being, from doing any evil. So you see, he's giving you the foundation and he's saying to you, these are the people that are coming back to his way. And let not the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yahuwah speak, saying, Yahuwah has certainly separated me from his people, nor let the eunuch look and uh, look, I am a dry tree, because this is what the father says. And to them I shall give my house. Verse 5, and to them I shall give my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of the sons and daughters. I give them an everlasting name that is not cut off. So he is going to give them a house that they, so even the nations, the foreigner, the son of the foreigner, they are being grafted into the house. Remember some of the branches, Romans 11, some of the branches were broken off because of their unbelief as there are other branches that now are being grafted in because the people are now holding onto the tzitzit of the garment of the one who is a Yehudi, who is Yoshua, who has brought us the way, who has shown us the way and we are holding on to the tzitzit we are holding on to his commands to his torah to his precepts to his right rulings and where he says and also the son of the foreigner who joined themselves to yahuwah to serve him and to love the name of yahuwah so you see how do you then say that you love yahuwah if you don't even know his name you need to love the name of yahuwah because the name of Yahuwah is the character of Yahuwah and we get to know him through knowing his name and being able to come deeper into him as the name opens the door to reveal the deeper revelations of his heart to be his servants, all who guard the Sabbath and not profane it and are holding on to my covenant. Them I shall bring to my set-apart mountain and let them rejoice in my house of, of prayer this ascending offerings and their slaughterings are accepted on my slaughter place for my house is called a house of prayer for all the peoples. And so yeah, we see Abba Yahuwah has made a way for all the people to be able to be grafted in. 
And now if we want to look at our restored covenant, our renewed covenant, our covenant, which is, this is the foundation, but then there is one that is um, being able to be the restored, the renewed covenant. And we have a look at Ephesians chapter 2. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. And we have a look from verses 11 to 19. And it says, Therefore remember that you once nations in the flesh. So you were in the flesh. You were separated from the Father because you are still a flesh being. Who, who called the uncircumcised. But what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. So now you are grafted into the circumcised because that was the circumcision of the, of the covenant that was given. But now we have been circumcised of our heart because Torah has been written upon the tablets of our heart. So the circumcision is no longer the circumcision of the physical flesh, but it's the circumcision of the heart because the Torah has been written on the tablets of our heart. That all that time were without Messiah excluded from the citizenship of Israel. You see, we were excluded. We were not part of Israel. We were not part of the house. We were not part of the covenant that was made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abba Yahuwah, now he's given us his son, and now he's established the house to be able to graft us into this house. So we were excluded from the citizenship of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no expectation and without a lawyer in the world. So understand, that is what a heathen is. A heathen is one that is without Yah, one that is completely without Yah. But now in Messiah Yahushua, because you see, we hold on to the hem of the garment, we need to understand that he is a Yehudi. He comes with a foundation to give us, to return us back to our house. But now in Messiah Yahushua, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Messiah. For he is our peace, who has made both one and having broken down the partition of the barrier, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the Torah of the commands in the dogma. So in his flesh, he came to abolish the dogma. The dogma is all the customs and the religious traditions of man. So understand, the other, the other Bibles do not read this. They say he came to abolish the law. Far be it from the truth. Far be it from the way that they have interpreted our Bible to say that he has come to do away with the law. He did not come to do away with the law of the Father. He came to do away with the law of the customs and the traditions of man, which... Paul understood very clearly where he said, I am a Pharisee of Pharisees. I studied under Gamaliel. I understand these pharmaceutical ways, all these customs and the traditions of man that profit man nothing. The same as in Christianity, we want still our customs and our traditions. And the same as we want to still now start to follow Judaism and do these Judaism customs and traditions that profit man nothing. He came to do away with all those customs and the traditions and he wants us to follow him. And he says that he removed the command in the dogma as to create in himself one renewed man from the two, thus making peace. So from the two, from the Gentile and from the Jew, he has made a new man because we are now all of us being taken from our idolatrous ways. And to complete, restore to favor both of them unto Allah in one body through the stake having destroyed the enmity by it. So he destroyed all these customs and traditions of man. And having come, he brought us good news, peace to you who were afar off and peace to those near. Because through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit so that you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the set-apart ones and the members of the household of Alua. Praise you, Abba Yahuwah. That is what he has done. So we needed to lay this foundation. 
in order for us to be able to understand what the Father is doing here and what he's speaking through Isaiah. And that is why we need to understand that Isaiah is going to stand up against an arrogance and a pride of man to understand that man has exalted themselves and they need to come low. And people shall take them and bring them to their own place. We're going to, con sorry, we continue to read from chapter um, Isaiah 14, verse 2. And people shall take them and bring them to their own house, and the house of Israel shall possess them for servants and females, servants in the land of Yahuwah, and they shall make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. And it shall be in that day. Yahuwah give you rest from your sorrow and from your trouble and the hard service in which you were made to serve. So you see, just like he gave rest to the Israelites that were captive, he has brought us a deliverer, just like Moshe came as a deliverer to his people. So as he brought us Yahushua as the deliverer to once again restore us back to a kingdom where we will be able to have a just and righteous king to rule and reign over us that is not going to be fleshly, to oppress us and suppress us, but that is a deliverer to bring us peace and joy and harmony. So he says in verse 4, And you shall take up this proverb against the sovereign of Babel, and say, how the oppressor has ceased and the gold gatherer ceased. So you see, he is going to destroy Babylon. He's going to destroy the king of Babylon, just like he destroyed the Pharaoh that was holding the people captive, a wicked, evil Pharaoh. So you see, there's always a type of a wicked, evil Pharaoh, a wicked, evil leader that was this king of Babel, but yet he was used at the hands of the father, the same as the father was using that Pharaoh. He hardened the Pharaoh's heart in order to bring about his purposes and the plans. And so the same as he used this king of Babel in order to be able to bring about his purposes and plans. But we must understand, Abba allows, allowed Babylon to have a temporary power for a purpose, and that was to punish his wayward people. When the purpose ended, so did the power. We need to be able to be very careful to not place our confidence in human power and human um, wealth and human stand in this world. Because when it has not served its purpose or when it has served its purpose, then in one day it will fade. And no matter how strong it appears now, it will be destroyed. And so that is why he says, Yahuwah has broken the staff of the wrong, the scepter of rulers. He who struck the people in wrath with ceaseless blows, he who rules the nations in displeasure is persecuted and no one restrains. So understand, we have had evil, wicked leaders over us. And look and see, especially in Africa, when leaders raise up to power. And it's not only just in Africa, but it is all over the, the nations of the world. In Africa, because they were in poverty or because they didn't have power, the minute they rise to power, what do they do? They want to enrich themselves and they oppress the people at the, at the expense of enriching themselves. So that, that is why then you will have these nations in Africa that will be totally in poverty while their leaders live in wealth because they allow it to get to their head. They did not have the power. They did not have the riches. They did not have all these things. And now when they come to power, the first thing that they want to do is to enrich themselves. And they do not think of, of what it is to be able to, um, you know, what it is in order to be able to understand that the wealth has been given to them and the power has been given to them. So you will strip, strip it from the, those who oppressed the people so 
he stripped it from those that oppressed the people and then he gives it to another people in order to be able to give them the opportunity. And this is what we see even happen in the nation of South Africa. Because there was a people that oppressed a people group. There was a people that came in superiority and wanted to oppress a people group. So the father has removed the power from a people and given it to another people group. And now that people group have raised up and they've brought even more destruction what there was before. Now even more wickedness has come in. Because the previous people at least still try to abide by the Bible. But this next people have thrown out the Bible completely and have brought even more destruction than what there ever has been. And this is why we see the fall of kingdoms and we see the fall of kings because at the end of the day, one king becomes more wicked than the other and the father gives opportunity to people to repent. But instead, what happens? Great destruction comes. And so he says, and all the earth, but there's coming a day. Listen to verse 7 is a, is a, is a, a blessing. All the earth is at rest and at peace. They shall break forth into singing. Even the cypress trees rejoice over you and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since you were cut down, no woodcutter have come up against us. Shaol from beneath is excited about you to meet you at your coming. It stirs up the dead for you. All the chief ones of the earth it has raised up from their thrones. All the sovereigns of the nations, all of them respond and say to you, have you also become as weak as we? Have you become like us? Your arrogance has been brought down to Shaol, and the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot, is spread under you and worms cover you. So understand, what is going to be the destruction of Babylon that is coming? Was this also not the, the destruction of the king of Babel? So if we have a look at Daniel chapter 4. So understand we're going to look at the fact that this, we're going to look at the play between a king who has fallen and other kings that fell as well. So understand he came and brought much destruction upon many kings. He brought a destruction upon the king of Judah. And he brought destruction upon the king of Israel. And he brought the destruction about there was much destruction with many kings that fell. And these kings were also wicked. But now these kings are looking at him and saying, well, what have you done? Look and see. This is the proverb against Babel. Understand the proverb against Babel, the proverb against the king of Babel to say, look and see that you also not come down to Shewol that you as well became wicked and evil. You also went and raised yourself up in arrogance. And that is why the father really stands up against leaders and against kings and against those that he gives power and against those that he gives wealth and against those that he puts on the earth that are to be able to come and that they are to understand they raise up, but it's not for themselves. If they raise up for themselves, they will be destroyed. And so we look at Daniel and if we look at Daniel chapter chapter 4 from verses 30 and it says, And the sovereign spoke and said, Is not this great Babel? So now understand the sovereign is boasting in what he has achieved. And this is what many leaders do and this is what many kings do. They boast in what they have achieved, thinking that it's what they have achieved, that they can gloat in what they have achieved. And he sang, and the sovereign spoke and said, Is not this great Babel, which I myself have built for the house of the rain, by the might of my power and by the esteem of my splendor? The word was still in the sovereign's mouth when a voice fell from the heavens, Sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the rain has been taken away from you, and you are driven away from men, and your dwelling is to be with the beasts of the field. So understand, he's taking them. He had splendor, but he's giving him to the beasts of the field, the beasts because of your flesh nature, the beasts of the earth of those that operate by their flesh nature. They do not have the, the, the spirit of Yahuwah. And it says, the beasts of the field... And 
the beasts of the field, you are given grass to eat like oxen, and seven seasons shall pass over you until you know that the Most High is the ruler in the reign of men, and he gives it to whomever he wishes. And so understand, he raises up kings and he brings down kings. And so he raises up people to authority and he gives them much wealth and he gives them much authority. And if they, if they oppose the father, he will strip it from them and they will be destroyed in the end. And they will go down to Sheol because what have they done with the, with the authority that has been given them? What have they done with the power and the authority that was given them? And so this is why we must understand what is he saying. Your arrogance has been brought down to Shaol, and the sound of your stringed instruments, the maggot is spread under you and the worms cover you. Because there are so many even pastors and leaders and preachers and prophets and apostles. And yesterday I had to watch something that left me bent over of heart to see the arrogance and the pride. In, a, in the churches of these leaders that use and abuse the power of the Father. And they are thinking that they are going to be able to carry on. But let me tell you, the time is coming when the carpet will be taken out from underneath these people and great is going to be their fall, as we are going to read now, as we continue to read in chapter, in verse 12. And it says, And you have fallen from, hev from the heavens heavens. O oh, Halal, O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, you have been cut down to the ground, you who laid low the, la the nations. For you have seen in your heart, let me go up to the heavens, let me raise my throne above the stars of Al, and let me sit in the mount of appointment on the sides of the north. Let me go, d go up above the heights of the clouds, let me be like the Most High. So understand, what is the Father doing here? The Father is bringing a comparison between the king of Babel, this arrogant man that raised himself up and bringing the, the, his scepter to the ground. And he is explaining to say, you see, there was one that went before from the beginning and he is the one who is your father. All these wicked, evil kings that raise themselves up, that want to have their own throne, that want to do their own way. He's going to bring an example of this. And the example that he's bringing, he's saying, you are of your father, the devil, because he is the one who did this from the beginning. And that is why we are going to look at this and have to understand what is the father trying to tell us when will is on the throne. When man raises themselves up and they do not want to bow their knee to the Father and allow the Father to have his way in them, they are then of their father the devil, which is exactly what Yeshua spoke when he spoke against the Pharisees. He said, you brood of vipers, you are of your father the devil. Why? Because your flesh nature is standing in the way and you Exalt yourself to think it is you that has the authority and the power. No, no. You have no authority or power that is not given to you by the Father. He raises up kings and he brings down kings. And so now he's comparing him to say that he was the son of the morning. He was Lucifer. And that was the one who raised himself. Let me go up to the heavens, the heights of the clouds. And let me be like the Most High. So you see, these leaders think that they can be like the Most High. They can be like Yahuwah. They can be a Lua on the earth. They can dictate over men and be the ones to think that they can raise up and do what they want over men. Those who see you stare at you and ponder over you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble and shook reins? So understand, here we are seeing a... A picture of both an analogy here so it's going to be speaking of where the father is using Hasatan as being able to say is this the man that was leading the nations astray the same as he's speaking to the king of Babylon and he's saying when he falls he became like a wild beast 
that was wandering in the fields lived like a wild animal that the kings of the earth would have looked and said, was this the mighty man, the one that was leading the nations of the world, the one that was the most powerful man that led all the nations. And so if we have a look, and so when we look at this from verses 12 to verses 15, where it says, and let me go up to the heights of the clouds, let me be like the Most High, but you are brought down to Sheol, to the side, to the sides of the pit. So he will bring them down. He'll bring them down to the underground. And where he says, who made the world, and, and those who see you stare at you and ponder over you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook rains, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who would not open the house of his prisoners? All the sovereigns of the nations, all of them, were laid in esteem, every one in his own house. But you have been thrown from your burial site like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who are killed, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a trampled corpse. You are not joined with them in the burial places, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. Let the seed of evildoers never be mentioned. So understand this is what the father is also saying of the future Babylon you see he's not only speaking of that Babylon but he's speaking of a future Babylon that we must understand that those that are carrying on and bringing destruction upon the earth all these kings of the earth all these leaders of the earth all these powerful businessmen that are raising up that are wanting to oppress the people and the wealth and everything that they're taking from the people they're oppressing the poor they're oppressing the needy they oppress the widow they oppress all these people people of the father and they raise themselves up and they use their wealth for themselves and for enriching of themselves at the oppression of the father's people there is a destruction that is going to come their way and so if we have a look and we see what the father said in Ezekiel because this is speaking about Hasatan but it's also speaking about the king of Babel but it's also speaking about kings because at the end of the day if we have a look from verses 18 to 20, and it talks about the sovereigns of the nations. All of them were laid in their steam, every one in his own house. But you have been thrown from your, bron from your burial site like an abominable branch. Now, Yari talks about the kings who have destroyed their people. These kings that have destroyed their people will not rest even in death. Yahuwah will pronounce a terrible judgment on these kings because they choose to kill and destroy rather than help and develop the people. Understand, there will be no rest for the kings. And this is why the Father's going to judge the nations of the world, because this Babylon is a Babylonian system that is holding the people captive. And this is the judgment that is going to bring upon these Babylonian systems. And so if we have a look at Ezekiel, Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 28 from verses 13 so that we may understand what the Father is saying about when men are led by a flesh nature. And this is the warning of what the Father is trying to say. I do not want you to be led by a flesh nature because this is the warning that he's giving in this chapter. If you are going to be a, a minister of, of, of Yahuwah's gospel of Yahuwah's kingdom so if you call yourself an apostle a prophet a pastor an evangelist a teacher and you will you will um come and you will um abuse his power you will abuse his gifts he's going to destroy you because you are operating according to your flesh. If you are a king and he's giving you the wealth in, of the kingdom so that you may be able to use it for the father and you use and abuse that wealth for yourself, you will be destroyed because it's pride comes before a fall. This is what he's talking about leaders. And listen to what he says. You are in Edom. The garden of, of Elua. Every precious stone was your covering. 
the ruby, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the shoham, the jasper, the sapphire, turquoise, emerald, gold, the workmanship of your settings and the mounting was prepared for you on the day you were created. So understand, this was a cherubim. This was a cherubim that was so beautiful. Imagine being made up of all these precious stones, a precious cherubim. And you were the anointed cherub that covered and I placed you. You were on the set-apart mountain of Elua. You walked up and down in the mists of the stone of fire. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness found in you. Until unrighteousness was found in you you. So you see, unrighteousness will find its way in you when man starts to exalt themselves and they don't bow their knee to the way of the Father. By the greatness of your trade, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. So you see, when the lust of the flesh takes hold of a man's heart, then what happens? They become violent within themselves and they sin because the lust of the flesh takes over the pride of life. They exalt themselves and they elate themselves because the pride gets hold of their heart because they pride themselves in thinking that what they've been given is for themselves as opposed to for the Father and for his kingdom. So I thrust you from the mountain of Elua, and I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. So even these men and women of Yahuwah that want to raise themselves up and think that this is my church and my people and my flock and my things, you must understand nothing is yours. It's the Father's uh, uh, um, ministry, it's the Father's people, it's everything of the Father but when you start to raise yourself up, pride is coming before the fall your heart was lifted up because of your loveliness and you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor so do you see, this is what starts to happen, they start to give themselves ministries with their own name, they start to elate themselves thinking that it's their gifts and their things that is raising them up, meantime behind the scenes they are to humble themselves to understand without Abba Yahuwah we are truly nothing I threw you to the earth, I laid you before sovereigns to look at you, there you go I laid you before sovereigns to look at you. And this is exactly what he is speaking here in Isaiah where he's saying. So let's read again. But you've been thrown from your burial site like an abominable branch, like the garment of those who killed, who, who are killed, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a trampled corpse. You are not joined with them in the burial place, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. Let the seed of evildoers never be mentioned. So he will not only just destroy that leader, but he will destroy that leader's seed because the seed is rotten to the core. Prepare his children for slaughter. Because of the crookedness, we are back now in Isaiah chapter 13 and we are reading from verse 21. Prepare his children for slaughter. Because of the crookedness of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. And I shall rise up against them, declares Yahuwah of hosts, and shall cut off from Babel the name and remnant and offspring and descendants, declares Yahuwah. So the leader, the offspring, he will destroy them all. That's what he would do. Remember what he did when um, he said when when they went in to take the city of Jericho and he said, the spoils are mine, the first fruits is mine. You are not to take the spoil, you are not to take anything. You go in, you possess the land, you to take nothing. But here comes a man 
who thinks to be able to go and take the spoil. He goes and takes the spoil for himself. Father not only killed that man, but killed his entire household. Because at the end of the day, the seed was going to be wicked. So he destroyed the whole household. And so he turns around and we see that then he brings the destruction. So other will bring down the arrogance and the pride of man. People that want to exalt themselves and think that what other blesses them with is for themselves. He will bring destruction on them to understand nothing that he gives us is for ourselves. Everything that he gives us is not for ourselves but for him. So at the end of the day we must understand the kings who destroy their people will not rest because at the end of the day father did not raise up a king so that it can be about me, myself and I and my kingdom. Father raises up kings because they are supposed to be able to be there for the people that are going to need the resources of that king. And that king is to be able to lead the people righteously. And so now we read verse 23. And I shall make it a possession for the porcupine and the marshes of muddy water and shall sweep it with the broom of destruction, declares Yahuwah of hosts. Yahuwah of hosts has sworn, saying, truly, as I have planned, so shall it be. And as I have purposed, so it stands. So um, we must understand one thing. What the Father says he will do, he will do. This Bible is a Bible that is from Genesis to Revelation with a pattern on how the Father does things. And we must understand, if the Father decrees a thing, the Father will do it. And we must understand, just like the Father gives power and authority to be able to be the ministers of the gospel. He gives power and authority to kings. And he is going to destroy them. They are going to have to give an account before the father to say, what did you do with the resources that I gave you? What did you do with it? Was it for you? Was it for your kingdom? Was it for me? Was it for my kingdom? Or do I give him a portion and keep the portion for myself? We will stand accountable before the Father for all that he has entrusted into our hands. And this is why this chapter is about the destruction of kings that are going to be arrogant, filled with pride, and he's giving them the example of saying, this is what I did to Hasatan, who tried to exalt himself and think that I'm going to be like Yahuwah. I'm going to exalt myself to the heavens. And that is why he's going to judge Babylon. Babylon is a system. It is going to be a physical place, but it is going to represent a system. And that system is going to crash. So he says, Yahuwah of hosts has sworn, saying, Truly, as I have planned, so shall it be. As I have purposed, so it stands. When the Father speaks, his word will not return void. That which he says shall surely be. To break Ashur in my land and to tread him down on my mountains and his yoke shall be removed from them and his burden removed from their shoulders. So this is now the destruction of the king of Assyria. He is going to bring destruction. And this happened in Second Kings 19. It came to pass. This is the counsel that is counseled for all the earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. For Yahuwah of hosts has counseled. And who annuls it? And his hand that, and his hand that is stretched out. Who turns it back? So do you see, once the Father has sent out a decree, once the Father has said, this is what is going to come upon the earth, you must understand it is not going to be returned. 
The only thing he expects of us is to repent and make sure that we stand right before him so that we are not going to be part of the destruction that is going to come. But if we are going to resist him and we are going to stand in our arrogance and our pride before him, he is just saying he is not going to be able to, to, um, to rescue one who's going to be in arrogance and pride. Because pride comes before a fall, and this we must understand. This is exactly what is going to happen, because pride will come before a fall. And that we understand, that we have read in um, uh, um, Proverbs 16, verses 18, and it says that the pride comes before a fall. So let's look and see. Let's just quickly go there because I don't like to just read scripture. Um, Proverbs chapter 16 from verses. Let's just read verse 17. The highway of straightness. Remember I said he's building a highway of holiness. The highway of straightness is to turn away from evil. He who guards his life watches over his way. So that his way is totally submitted and surrendered to the Father. So are you in a place where your knee is bowed, where you are totally and utterly, utterly surrendered to the Father, allowing the Father to lead your life in what he plans and wills, not in your plan and your will? Before destruction comes, pride and before a fall, a haughty spirit. So a haughty spirit is one that will not bow its knee and do things the Father's way. But they use their reasoning mind in order to be able to follow according to their own reasoning mind. And they do not seek the Father. And they do not seek the Father's will and the Father's way in how he wants things to be done. And that is why he is now bringing the destruction. That's why he says... In verse 27 of chapter 14, For Yahuwah of hosts has counseled, and who annuls it, and his hand that is stretched out, who turns it back. This is the message which came, to the, to, which came in the year that the sovereign Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, all you Philistia. So you see, now he declares judgment on the Philistines. So now it's judgment declared to the, to the Philistines, to the king of Philistia. That the rod that struck you is broken. So you see, just because you are now going to rejoice because now Assyria has been destroyed and Babel has been destroyed, all these places are being destroyed and now you will gloat and think, well, you know what, they all destroyed. And he says, do not rejoice, all you of Philistia, that the rod that struck you is broken. For out of the serpent's root comes forth an adder. So understand, from that king there comes forth a son, and that son will be even worse. It's the adder, and its offspring is a fiery flying serpent. So don't be too quick to be too arrogant in your pride either. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy lie down in safety, and I shall kill your roots with scarcity of food. So there, there's the destruction that is going to come upon Philistia because I am going to be able to bring scarcity of food, and it shall kill your remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, melt away, all you Philistia, for smoke shall come from the north, and there is no stranger in his ranks. So understand, in the midst of everything, Father will only have a remnant. And what does one answer the messenger of a nation? That Yahuwah has founded Zion and the poor of his people take refuge in it. You see, the poor of his people, those who are contrite of heart, the poor in spirit, those who really realize how much they need Yahuwah. Those who have been laid low, those who have humbled themselves, the humble of Yahuwah. You could basically say of here that it says, and Yahuwah has found Zion, and the humble of his people take refuge in him. The, those lowly, those humbled, those humbled before the Father shall take refuge in him. So understand, he wants the lowly 
those who are pliable in his hand, those who are humble in his hand, not the arrogant, not the pride, not that those that are still going according to their own mind and doing their own thing and thinking that everything that they have is for themselves. It's not. It's the Father, and he will have his way because destruction is coming upon the earth in a fast and furious way. May Abba Yahuwah bless you all. Shalom, shalom.